Hey, this is head coach Hugh Jackson, the greatest coach of all time. You're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. It's football time. <laughs> I was curious what you were going to do. Maybe. Well, I did, no greater introduction than the, the greatest, greatest coach, coach of, of all time. time. Yep. I love Michael Keaton. I love Michael Keaton. He'll be in the Hall of Fame, right? Hugh? Well, I look, first first ballot. <laughs> Adam Gaze is coaching tonight, and so. We thought Hugh Jackson should introduce the show. That, those <laughs> seem because uh, Adam Gaze will be available on Cameo very soon. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty soon, you're going to hear, "Hey, this is Adam Gaze, That's the right. greatest coach of all time." <laughs> oh man, please! <laughs> oh come on! Thursday, October first. Uh. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore. I'm Andy Holloway. I will say this about tonight. Uh, we, we got the news that Le'Veon Bell is targeting a week five return. This is the last time to see the wall torn down, fellas. Oh, Gorbelage. Mis- Mr. Gorbelage has one more chance to get it down. He- so, sometimes it takes me a second to remember our references. <laughs> You're going, right. He's going at that wall with like a toothpick. It's not, not getting anywhere. This is the, uh, I saw a tweet. Frank Gore is the, he's, he's starting tonight. And he was playing football before Thursday Night Football was invented. Yeah. Okay. Checks so, out. It checks out. We've <laughs> Wait, got, is that true? It is true. <laughs> Thursday Night Football hasn't been around that long. Yeah. But Frank Gore has. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the FF Ballers on Twitter, the fantasyfootballers.com is the website. Join the foot.com is the fantasy football community. Very proud to announce that last night we managed to, thanks to the Foot Clan entirely, uh, bring home our fourth Best Sports Podcast Award at the uh, from the Podcast Awards. Mm-hmm. And we also won Best Comedy for the Spitballers Podcast, our other, our other show. What's so, that, Andy? Well, What's that, the, the Spitballers Podcast? What is that? That is a show that we do not prepare for in any way, shape, or form. That's true. So that is our comedy podcast that you can check out. Where we, um, you know, we try to we try to keep it one hundred on the show. Oh yeah, right here. And oh, so we try yeah. to keep it on fantasy. We don't let the we don't let the tangents go too far. We want to entertain you, but we want to bring you some knowledge that helps you win your week. We try to balance that. Yeah, we're here to win and yeah. uh, win, th- win. Gorbalash joke, <laughs> win, win. Exactly. And so yeah, we we do try to stay on task, but we we have an itch. That, yeah, <laughs> that we have that to scratch. Must be scratched. And that's the Spitballers Comedy Podcast. You can uh, you can check that out. And if you're worried that we're just a bunch of jokesters, look, we should celebrate the fact that right now we are all three in the top twelve in rankings as well. So we're getting it done. Fantasy football. That's our, right. Our accuracy is uh, well, it's good again. <laughs> Jason is always willing to speak on behalf of us. On yeah, such matters. I got you. Uh, but no, thank you very much, Foot Clan. You guys are awesome. And um, yeah, this is, it's, it's, it's exciting to be acknowledged for good work. We, mm-hmm. we definitely have been here for a long time doing this, and we love doing it. So thank you very much. Uh, it is going to be a busy show today. We have matchups to get into. We have some big news to break down that broke this morning. Jason's Boom Boom Kicker starts of the week. Let's get it going. Taking it up to 100. Presented by Head and Shoulders. Available at Walmart. All right, I'm not goosing anymore in this segment. Oh, you're you're finally going to take it to 100. I, I took it to 100 last week with Devin Singletary. That's right. Mike, you hit with Jarek McKinnon, and then Jason took Drew Sample. Now, for the <laughs> record, this was my first miss. Correct. Uh, and he did catch 100% yeah, of his Yeah, when passes. you miss, miss big. Uh, I'm sorry. He <laughs> caught 100% of his pass. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so we pick a player we think is going to take oh. it up to 100 this week. Sometimes it's a player outside the kind of consensus top group of ranked 
starters in fantasy. Sometimes it's a player that had a bomb week, somebody that struggled that we think is going to bring it back this week. I'm going with the game tonight. I'm going to take Melvin Gordon against yep. the Jets tonight. Yep. He was quite putrid last week against Tampa, finished 43rd at the running back position, but he had been double digits the past two weeks, uh, finishing 16th and 18th at the position. He gets the Jets. It's a great matchup. Uh, they don't have Cortland Sutton. This is the Melvin Gordon offense. Philip Lindsay's probably not playing. Yep. So I think Melvin Gordon, big bounce back game tonight. Probably the sole highlight of this game fantasy wise. Well, yeah. If if there's, I mean, if you look at every option that you can start, there's not one outside of Melvin Gordon that I am either that I'm like happy about being in my lineup. So I I think that's fair. I'm going with a guy who has stunk twice in a row and uh, apparently has been so bad that when I walked in uh, our producers were like are you are is you this really your, is this are your you, player are you taking him okay I just want to make sure that that wasn't like a joke written in by someone else um no I I am taking Marquez Valdez Scantlin taking it up Scantlin Scantlin we're dropping the G now oh man me, when you're friends when you're close you can drop the G it's kind of like a first name basis so Scantlin <laughs> going to be out there scamping around and doing great. Here's the thing. Skibbity Scantling. He was the wide receiver at 11 week one, right? Aaron Rodgers sure. came out, went nuclear. Every wide receiver had a, had a day. And if you look at the snap percentages over the last three weeks, Scantling has been very involved. He was on the field over 90% of the time, and he's a deep threat. And this matchup against Atlanta. It makes sense that you would drop part of his name because he drops most of his passes. Oh, hey -o. Oh, boom, boom. Uh. <laughs> oh, I cut it off. So oh. um, my point is I think the matchup is one of those where you could take a shot, uh, you know, a flyer. Look, I my team right now is dealing with uh, some issues, and if you have to dig deep on the waiver wire, I think that this is a matchup where if it comes through, if Scantling has a projecting. good game, which I am projecting, if he takes it up to 100, it's going to be a really good, successful, you know, it's going to be a – 80 plus yards touchdown game and and that will certainly be taking it up to 100. All right, I'm going with the Las Vegas slot machine himself, Hunter Renfro. Uh rookies Brian. You know I support this message. Yep, yeah, of course. And Andy is <laughs> Andy is like the leader of the Henry Ruggs bandwagon. It's really funny. Of the Hunter Renfro bandwagon. Uh, of well, the Derek Carr bandwagon. <laughs> it's, it, no, it's it's funny the way that we attach to these players and Andy's guy is Hunter Renfro but I am all in on it this week rookies now, now I feel like you're overstating it a bit I don't want it this official rookies Brian Edwards Henry Ruggs likely not playing this is the Renfro and Walrus show that will be happening he's going to get a whole bunch of targets and I expect him to uh, hit the jackpot and take it up to 100 great opportunity for Hunter Renfro this week due to the reasons you outlined. So I, I agree. Pick yours. Uh, take your hair up to 100 with head and shoulders available at Walmart. Pick yours up today and check out next Tuesday's episode to hear how our up to 100 picks fared. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. All right, the big news today, the Steelers-Titans game has been officially postponed beyond this week. So it is not going to take place Monday or Tuesday an additional Titans player and one personnel member tested positive for COVID-19. It will not be played in week four. Uh, this will be treated as the Titans bye week. It's going to have a ripple effect for the Steelers, for other teams as the schedule adjusts. But in a way, now obviously we are wishing well to all those affected in Tennessee, the players, the personnel, Hopefully, uh, I had heard that some of these cases, if not all, had been asymptomatic thus far. We hope that continues and everybody stays healthy. The league's making the right decision to announce it early. They're also making the right decision to not jeopardize Steelers players or additional mm -hmm. staff. Not pulling a, what was it, the Marlins? Yeah. Where they're like, well, we got it, but we're going to vote to play anyways. Yeah, the trickle-down effect is significant, so... Maybe this is a wake-up call to some of the teams that had been lax about some of their protocols. Hopefully. We uh, So we wish them well. Uh, and for fantasy players, best possible news to find out on a Thursday morning before any games have taken mm -hmm, place this mm -hmm. week, including tonight's game, that this game's not going to happen. No more contingency plans. No more backup players. We fundamentally know this game is a buy for both teams, or this week is a buy for both teams. 
People have been complaining. I've seen it on Twitter. They're complaining that Sleeper won't consider players missing this week as COVID IR eligible. Because they don't have COVID. Right, and and just so that we can weigh in. Yeah, yeah the, so here's here's the situation. This is going to be a missed game for both teams, and they will get this game back. Right. This is the bye week. It's an unexpected bye. You Correct. had looked at the schedule, and you weren't able to plan for this, but this is a situation where you should not be able to put them on your COVID IR spot. This is a bye week, mm -hmm. and look, you if you're like, no, you don't understand – Nobody has it off worse than I do. Okay, I had <laughs> I had AJ Brown and Corey Davis and James Conner and Benny Snell all rocking while I lost Christian McCaffrey. I'm gonna have to deal with it. My bench is full of bye weeks now, unexpectedly in week four, and it's gonna be fine. So I I encourage you all just play the waiver wire, do your best, and you'll get bye weeks back later in the season when yeah. you know when you thought they were gonna miss a game. I had. Kenyon Drake and James Conner sharing a week eight bye. The purpose now of COVID, I probably don't. Yeah, the purpose of COVID IR is if the team is playing and a player is missing that game due to COVID. Yes. Uh, injury updates. Leonard Fournette could be out in week four. Ronald Jones will get a lot of work. Well, let, let's throw the – there's a little bit of a positive spin here for the Titans. A.J. Brown had a chance to play. He had a chance. So now that is the bye week, they're – that's an extra game of A.J. Brown if he is on your team. That's how you should choose to look at this. I dropped Corey Davis. I'm not holding on to him because I feel like A.J. Brown will be back by the time uh, the yes. Titans are. Same goes for Deontay Johnson, who had a concussion yes. this past week. He gets an extra week without you. Come on, half full, people. Half full. Half full. We got to yeah. do what we got to do. Leonard Fournette could be out. Bruce Arians not optimistic about him playing or Godwin playing. Both was, will likely miss. That was wild, man. The, the Leonard Fournette news, I feel like that kind of came out of nowhere. Scotty Miller has a great opportunity. Oh, wait. He's hurt. He's groin. Duh. Didn't practice. So, yeah, with Chris Godwin out, we would expect that Justin Watson will be playing in the slot. If Scotty Miller is uh, – he hasn't practiced the last couple days. If Scotty Miller is out, Justin Watson becomes a really intriguing deep play. He will be in the slot. He will be on the field. He will take the place of Chris Godwin. And Chris Harris – won't be playing for the Chargers. So he if you're in a deeper league, he is interesting to me. Yeah, I mean, and and maybe you see I, I hate to even bring it up, but he, he was on the field for more snaps. He was targeted more often last week. And if there's multiple uh -oh. injuries, uh oh <laughs> you could see a, a a floor game from Rob Gronkowski this this week. I mean if it's Mike Evans and Justin Watson, how can you not think about Rob Gronkowski? Does Rob Gronkowski like have you seen a man run more awkwardly? Than Rob Gronkowski is running this yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, you He's guys always... have watched me play football, so yes, you two have. But I, I, for an NFL athlete, I understand. Like he's always looked. He's. He's never looked like fundamentally sound when he's running because he's such a big lumbering dude. But this year in particular, you're like that guy is running he, three miles an hour. Ever since he went like full time brace on the knee a few years back, he's looked bad. What, what do you guys feel? He's the, he was the 16th tight end last week. Six for 48. Didn't get into the end zone. It is a viable play. You are not wrong. You are not wrong. Is That's dangerous, but you're not wrong. Right. It could happen, and you can try that out. <laughs> I will I will watch you. Seven targets last um, week. No, you, you, are, you are right. If, if those players are out, they're going to need the tight ends. Now, it could end up being O.J. Howard instead of Gronkowski or Cameron Bright in the end zone. Who knows? But I think that this is a question for Tom Brady. Uh, I know Chris Harris is playing. out, but the Chargers are still a very good defense. They've got a good pass rush. Um, you know, a couple weeks ago, granted, with Chris Harris, they put a three-quarter lockdown on Pat Mahomes, which is not very easy, obviously in division. But I do think Tom Brady is someone I would be looking to pivot off of mm -hmm. if you're missing, you know, two-thirds of your best receiving weapons. Michael Thomas was limited on Wednesday. Do you think he plays this week? I do. I would still prepare that he is not going to play, but next week would be inevitable then. Surprisingly, DeAndre Hopkins missed practice on ah, Wednesday. I think that's a vet day. Yeah, he has been an Ironman in his uh, eight-year NFL career thus far. I think he's missed like two games ever. Uh, Kareem Hunt, this one's a little bit more concerning. Didn't practice on Wednesday. Stefanski said he was day-to-day. -day. They did promote Dontrell Hilliard from the practice squad. Yeah. But, you know, we'll see what happens. It, it's, you know, day-to-day -day sounds good. Um, if he said week-to-week, -week, that would sound bad. but. 
whatever it sounds like is irrelevant by comparison to transactions being made. Pulling up Dontrell Hill, Hilliard says they are preparing to be without Kareem Hunt to me. Now, that's not a guarantee he doesn't play, but, you know, we I, w I always trust, you know, we say follow the money. Mm -hmm. I trust the transactions more than I trust the coach speak. I don't know how frequent it is for them to call up a practice squad running back midweek if a guy misses a few days of practice. Yeah, this it feels very early. Usually the practice squad player is called up on Friday. So you, I, I just don't know what that means. Prepare. So, you better be ready. Yeah, I agree. And then that makes Nick Chubb a oh, – I mean, not that oh, you're not man. playing Nick Chubb, but set up for success against Dallas. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Carson limited with the knee injury. Carlos Hyde limited with the shoulder injury. Is Travis Homer somewhere on the radar? He, he's he somewhere. could be, yeah. He's, he's somewhere on that radar. Bleep, bleep. <laughs> bleep. Like he's a, he's like a mouse there. squeak. Bleep. Oh, yeah, um, that's the... That was the radar, yeah. yeah no, I've seen nice. him. He was right on the edge of the You've circle. You've seen radar before. I have seen a movie. Uh, the Hunt for Red October was... <laughs> oh, man. ...on when I was a child Did, in my you, house. <laughs> you pulled a Hunt for Red October reference? I liked it. Thanks. Um, I, yeah, I mean, look... Isn't that Sean Connery? <laughs> yes, it is. Sean Connery. Uh, <laughs> it's good news that Chris Carson is. I am the last one. <laughs> it's, it's I am good. the last sub. I am the last. No, I think sub. I went Dragon Heart on that. Uh, I think that was the last dragon. Chris Carson should play. Um, so Carson was expected to miss this week. <laughs> I am William Forrest. That is, well, that, that is a bring up an excellent point. That bad news from Sean Connery doesn't sound nearly as bad. No, that's how we should all receive it. <laughs> <laughs> we should always the get Titans and the Steelers. <laughs> they're getting pushed back. <laughs> See though, oh, okay. that's pretty cool. That's not bad. Oh, they're getting that's pushed back. Yeah, uh, no, and I, tr I trust back. it. Um, yeah. So back to the news. Can you trust any of these? <laughs> can you trust any of these running backs for Seattle? That's the question. Because you, I think you will be able to by the time we get to Sunday. Yeah, who would you expect right now will be the primary? I still think it's Carlos Hyde. I do, I do too. too. Yeah. Yeah. George Kittle, Jerick McKinnon back at practice. DJ Chark back at practice. James White back at practice. Oh, wait, Zach McKinnon. Moss back at practice. McKinnon being back, that's a that's a pretty big deal. He, I wasn't expecting him. Yeah, he practiced in full. So he is he's a go. He's just it's you know Jeff again. Absolutely. He's a, a startable fantasy option this week. Jared Cook, Mike Williams, John Brown, Henry Ruggs, Deshaun Jackson, no practice. We we need to watch Cook pretty closely. It's not very fun if he's your starting tight end to have to add another tight end to the roster, but you might have to do that. Could be a Jimmy Graham or a Gronkowski or some of the – we got some starts of the week we're bringing up today on the show. Those are two very interesting names. Which one would you take out of those two? I would go on the Jimmy Graham side. I would too. Okay. Yeah, after last week and Nick Foles' optimism, that type of thing. Uh, Mike mentioned it. Thursday night football updates. Phil Lindsay unlikely to play. Jamison Crowder. Ew. Jamison Crowder is not a hundred percent. He is expected to play, which means you can't play Jamison Crowder and you can't reach into the bushes and try and pick a Braxton Berrios. Which stinks. What if, if you it, have to play Jamison Crowder because oh, your entire no. bench is full? Oh no! Of, do you have to play Crowder he's in my lineup? And I do not like. I it. I think if he's starting, oh, you can no. take your shot. I, make sure he's not in your flex. Oh, he is. Thank you. That's a great <laughs> reminder, there, Mike. All right. Any other news that we need to get into? Hopefully not. All right. We're going to get into the matchups momentarily. We want to thank today's sponsor. We're talking about WGU. If you are ready to earn your degree, but you need a university that works with your schedule, that's what WGU brings. It's flexibility, something that you know all about, Jason. Something I don't have. Uh, but WGU does have flexibility. They offer a quality degree program that's affordable, flexible, makes it possible to graduate quicker, and then uh, you can do it You know, for under $8,700 a year, and that's with the fees included. So uh, let your experience and dedication help you earn your degree faster. See what WGU's competency-based programs can offer you. Uh, like I said, low, flat rate tuition. It covers as many courses as you can complete each term. That means the faster you learn, the more you save. You can get your $65 application fee waived right now at wgu.edu slash fantasy footballers. That's wgu.edu slash fantasy footballers for your $65 application fee waived. You guys ready? Yep. 
Fantasy Forecast. All right. It's week four, and we're into the matchups. The Indianapolis Colts sitting at 2-1, and one, taking on the Chicago Bears in Chicago. The Bears are 3-0. and oh. The Nick Foles experience begins. The Colts are 2.5-point favorites. It's a 43.5-point over under. All right, it's Nick Foles versus P. River. Hooray. And uh, I think it's interesting. I mean, the Colts' defense has been pretty good of late, and they are 2-1. and one. They are favored on the road by two and a half points. And so despite the 3-0 and record, we're looking at the Colts as the favorites in this game. Jonathan Taylor, a must start. Mm -hmm. David Montgomery, a must start. Mm -hmm. And somebody that we'll talk about a little bit later. Question marks around other Colts fantasy options, though. Players like Naeem Hines, T.Y. Hilton, Moali Cox. Uh, what are you doing with the rest of Indianapolis? They're favored in this game. How do you feel about them? Yeah, I, I I don't think that this looks like a Naeem Hines game necessarily. T.Y. Hilton is the biggest question mark to me. I think sure. everybody who has him is wondering, can I actually play this player? Now, if you look at the last two weeks, they've been trouncing their opponent. They've been The game has just been over, and they haven't needed to throw the ball. They haven't needed to play a lot of their starters late. It took the ceiling away from Jonathan Taylor this last week. It took a lot of what Hilton could have done. I expect this game to be close. I mean, there's only a two and a half point line and in a close game, you're going to need to throw the ball. I know it's not going to Michael Pittman. He's not playing. I know it's not going to Paris Campbell. He's not playing. I am starting T.Y. Hilton mm. in this matchup and it's really, really tough. That should have been my taking it up to 100 player because I think oh, a lot wow, of you're in uh, well a lot of fantasy managers are absolutely benching T.Y. Hilton I mean look you fool me once this is three weeks in a row where he's been terrible the entire season he has not been worthy of a start how do you start a player like that I think you do that when the other two options at wide receiver are gone and it's going to be a competitive game where they're going to need him Nick Foles gets a start neither of these quarterbacks is a real fantasy option but he does offer a little bit more of a ceiling to Allen Robinson. We have him as the wide receiver five on the week right now. It's, that's a bit high. That seems a little bit high. Yep. Uh, but last week, big week for Allen Robinson and the target totals, they'll be there. Uh, I've been looking to see if I can pick Allen Robinson up on the cheap in leagues right now. Sure, listen to Mike the Fantasy Human right last week. A week before. You said it might be my last chance, and I haven't, I haven't succeeded. Well, it was your last chance. Yeah, I, so, mean, I mean, yeah. Once, I didn't say second to last. Once the sale is over, <laughs> let me highlight you can't something. Get in on it. Colts are currently number one against opposing fantasy quarterbacks. Number five against running back. Five against wide receiver. One against tight end. They are crushing people. And last week, two pick sixes in that game against Darnold. They have been outstanding. Yeah, they are. They have been absolutely great. And this is a defense prior leading up to the season. They were the defense. I said my number one. I wanted the most. They've lived up to the billing. However, you have to at least have the context of they've played the Jaguars, the Vikings, Week Two dumpster fire, and the Jets. So they're they're good, right? But I I think similar to what we saw kind of with with the Patriots the Pat last year, where they were a little inflated because they were just playing really hurting teams at those uh, in those early weeks. Um, I don't expect them to shut Chicago down. They still seem like a great play this week. Oh, yes. Because yeah, Nick yeah. Foles will make – I mean, we talked about it. He won that game, but he tried to throw a couple pick sixes. I have no idea how he won. Jimmy Grandpa. Did. Yeah. Yeah, I mean – I look, think you can play him. Look, I know we disagree here, or at least I think Mike and I do, on Anthony Miller, but – my argument for Anthony Miller and Jimmy Grandpa is actually your argument, Mike, from years past where Nick Foles targets the slot. That is what he's sure. done his whole career. He comes in and all of a sudden he's he's hyper targeting Jimmy That's why Grandpa. Why you like Didi last year? Exactly. It, your it sweetie Didi was based on Nick Foles' slot usage, sure. and then obviously he didn't play, and and Didi the slot wasn't used. But my point here is I think that Anthony Miller is a startable fantasy option, not not someone that I'm looking to. Hunter you know, Renfro or Anthony Miller? I think that Hunter Renfro is safer. Okay. I think the volume is more secure there. T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton. Okay. T.Y. Hilton. Yeah. <laughs> Jacksonville. The Jaguars take on the Cincinnati Bengals. 
Jags are Ooh. one and two. Bengals are o oh, two and one. Cat battle. That's true. Wow. It's, a, it's it's a cat <laughs> battle. Uh, the Bengals are three point favorites. It's a a wonderful forty nine point over under. Oh, you, you don't agree? No, that's that's fine. That's a nice over yeah, under. I guess we just went from forty three to forty nine, Mike. The okay, line, well, okay, I'm back in. Well, and the line opened at forty seven and a half points. So this is a game that people are betting the over. They're looking at what Joe Burrow has been able to do and and what Gardner's been able to do, and say, I think these two guys are going to go tit for tat, kit for cat. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. I don't have an applause no. button, but that was one of your best. I have to know. Did you stumble into that, or oh. did you did you have it planned out and that, you just executed flawlessly? That was on the fly, my man. Oh, unbelievable! Man. Unbelievable! That was that was that was pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, that's just that's all I can give you. Shut it down. We're done. <laughs> We're done for the day. Uh, okay, so Gardner Minshew, Joe Burrow, can you start both of these quarterbacks this week? I well, I'll say this for Gardner. I I, I believe you should be able to play him. But last week, without DJ Chark, that was very worrisome to see just how important DJ Chark was to the passing attack. Where they couldn't do very, very much against the Miami Dolphins. So if DJ Chark is out, I'm going to pivot away. I mean, I would, if you're playing someone like Gardner, you're, you're playing the lower tier, you're streaming, give me Ryan Fitzpatrick. But if DJ Chark is in and you don't really have a, a huge option, like you're in Dynasty and your quarterbacks aren't great, if Chark's in, then then yes, you can play Gardner. I, I agree with you, and and I don't know that we expect Chark in. Gardner is is worrisome, but on the other side, Joe Burrow is someone you should start. Yeah, he's he, in play. He's looked excellent. I think they've done good things with their receiving core. The fact that they said, you know what, John Ross, I know you got a lot of draft capital, but you just don't get it done. We're going to go ahead. Oh, you're healthy? You're still not active for this game. We're going to bring in our early round draft pick, T. Higgins, to go with Tyler Boyd, who's got a good connection, and then hopefully A.J. Green still has something. The weapons... This is the walk the plank game for A.J. Green. Mm. Yeah. This is the walk. If A.J. Green is not a fantasy contributor to this week, it's time to go. Yes, but regardless, A.J. Green can, even if he has a mediocre game, he can help open things up for Joe Burrow. I think you should be starting him. A perfect example of, you know, we talked about Tom Brady earlier. If I had Tom Brady and Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow would be in my starting lineup. Okay. What about Drew Sampler Platter, Drew Poo? One reception last week, Jason Moore. You talked me into Drew last that's a, week. That's a poo sample. It is. And then you got the Jaguars defense ranked 30th against fantasy wide or tight ends. Look, I'm not in any kind of redraft. You can't possibly start okay. Drew Sample. But I think this Not week, even a little taste. I think this week will show you. Well, because you. You just don't want to clog well, a Higgins, roster. T. Higgins looked like he had a, a much more significant role. I'm pretty interested in seeing how it works out. T. Higgins on the field last week looked like he took my Drew Sample. It was <laughs> like, wait, who's this tight end? Oh, that's T. Higgins. Yeah, he's enormous. He is, you know, he he's out there. So, you know, if that's a type of player and archetype that, uh, you know, the Jaguars struggle against, that's where I would. Tyler I would put my Tyler Boyd is the wide receiver to start for Cincinnati. I above all others. I agree. And on the other side, Chark, hopefully he's back. We're going to monitor practice reports and get back with you on that. Uh, if he's if he's active, because he's limited today in practice, would, that means we still don't know. If he comes back, are you immediately starting him against the Bengals? The Bengals' I'm defense has some deceptive metrics right now. They are seventh against fantasy quarterbacks and fourth against wide receivers. And so you're saying to yourself, well, that is that's intimidating for Chark coming back from injury. They played Tyrod Taylor in week one. Okay. They went up against Baker and the running offense in week two, and then the Carson Wentz experience in the tie. So that's not a and, – and, you know, you talk about wide receiving options. It does not make me think the Cincinnati defense is that level of, of great. So I think Chark that's, is somebody that you probably have to play if you drafted him, okay. and he's active. If, if I have a, any, kind, uh, any kind of other pivot, I would, I would prefer to bench him. He, it's not like he was great before the injury. Now he's got the injury coming back if he's hampered at all. I know he, he, had a, you know, he caught all of his targets and had a touchdown or two, but it wasn't what you hoped for. You know, if I had a Devontae Parker. I like the over-under. I like the over-under and the chance that Burrow puts up big points and they have to catch up. Sure, sure. But we, so we kind of disagree on Chark. Would you play Chark or Crowder? 
Well, they're both coming off of injury, so I'll go Chark. I think okay. that the, the ceiling is higher there. All right. Um, Can anybody give me Chark <laughs> for my Jameson Crowder, please? <laughs> After you've driven his value down a little bit, maybe that trade's on the table. Yeah, all right. Chark stinks, man. <laughs> Who's got him? <laughs> Probably Mike. The Cleveland Browns. Oh, man, Cowboys games and over-unders. The Cleveland Browns, 2-1. and one. Dallas Cowboys, 1-2. and two. Cowboys four and a half point favorites with a fifty six <laughs> point over under. There we go. There we go. We talked about the fact that we might not have Cream Hunt in this game. We are waiting to see what happens Thursday, Friday practices. But Dak and Baker, I mean Dak in your lineup, Zeke in your lineup. Mm -hmm. Are you confident with Cooper, Lamb, and Gallup? I confidence. Uh, that's that's a tough thing to fully put on to CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup. I mean, Gallup hit last week, CeeDee Lamb. Also monitor CeeDee Lamb because he kind of had a, like a weird leg whip uh, where, where a uh, defender ran into his leg. He missed time after that, really didn't do anything in the game after that as well. I, I, I haven't heard a report on him, but he got hurt last week. So this is one of those like unreported injuries that you need to pay attention to. I mean, Cooper is in... <sighs> Not, I'm not super confident, but I'm probably playing all of them. I'm playing all three. I'm not playing Cedric Wilson until I know for sure that he's involved in it, but CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup, you can play them as low-end wide receiver twos, I believe. Is this the game where Dallas is finally not coming from behind and Zeke can get his work done? I mean, Cleveland's been really rough on defense this year. Dallas has been playing from behind all year long. Is this Zeke's kind of breakout week? Probably not. I think it's going to be more of what you've seen, which is good. I mean, yeah. nobody should be disappointed in Ezekiel Elliott. Maybe you regret not taking Kamara, but outside outside of that, Zeke has been solid, reliable, and will continue to be so. Uh, but this is a passing team. The Cowboys' defense has been bad, and they are going to – you know, the question is really to me is can Baker – pass the ball well enough in this very high over-under game against a very beatable defense, a secondary that looks not up to the task. This should be an Odell Beckham Jr. It, game. It should be. 41.2 points per game given up to opposing wide receivers by Dallas through the first three weeks. This should be a Beckham game. It should be a Beckham game. What about a Landry or Hooper game? No. Uh, what, what is the status of Hooper? I mean, he, he got banged up as well last week, and we saw the rookie Harrison Bryant – uh, tight end. He was the one who who got the touchdown for the Cleveland Browns. So, it, it not. I take it all back. I wasn't playing Hooper anyways. <laughs> like that just was never. Why happening. discuss Hooper? Exactly. When yeah. Okay. Now I, I will say this: the same way that we point out that the Colts' defense looks inflated, the the Dallas Cowboys' defense that is so beatable and Baker and Odell should have a good game. You know they did play against Russell Wilson and they played against Matt Ryan with Julio Jones and the Rams in week one. So they've gone up against much better quarterbacks than Baker. Dalton Schultz, we'll talk about him shortly. He's he's somebody, somebody that you can start this week. I Absolutely. have confidence in him Absolutely. for sure. The New Orleans Saints at one and two take on the Detroit Lions at one and two. The Saints are four and a half point favorites in this game. It's a 54 point over under. Why, why are they dancing around that number? Oh! Andy's almost upset of the week. Well, well, well. I didn't really plan that one, but when I saw the line and uh, the Lions having, uh, they've had some success. They've had some close games. I have confidence with them at home to uh, compete with the Saints. Saints have some stuff going a little bit sideways for them right now. i am not been impressed with Drew Brees. We don't know if Michael Thomas is going to be back out there. It's kind of iffy. Is he limited when he's back out there? And Kenny Galladay, you know, back on the field makes such a difference to this Detroit offense. All right. I, yeah. I, I don't mind it because I love Matthew Stafford this week. On, on the Lions side, I love Stafford now that Kenny Galladay is back and looked good enough. He looked like you give him another week of rest and recovery, and he should be, you know, mostly the Kenny Galladay that we are used to. Meanwhile, the running backs of Detroit, Continue to stay away. You're not. I'm not playing anybody on this team. And well, 
we'll yeah, talk it, about <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about uh, T.J. Hawkinson on the Lions side of the ball here in a little bit. I think it's a good play. The Saints have really been confounded by opposing tight ends so far on the season. I was only going to say Adrian Peterson is a start if you are somebody that is waiting for Chris Carson to play and you have to make a last second pivot because that he's in the Frank Gore category and you aren't going to have sure. that choice with Frank Gore because he's playing tonight. So if you need the desperation, I'm going to get 20 opportunities player. Peterson is that he's going to get 20 opportunities. It's not going to look pretty, but he's not going to goose you. He's the one I would play of the three. If I were Correct. backed into that corner, obviously, uh, Alvin Kamara, mm. He's, I would love he's been to start okay. him. <laughs> would you like to start Alvin Kamara, Jamison Crowder, Jason? Uh, it's tough, but if I could trade Jamison Crowder straight up, I would do it. You would. Uh, you wouldn't include anything else, but if you could get it straight up, yeah. If I could get the super, you don't want to overpay, right? Can you play Drew Brees? Yeah. Uh, so here, here's yeah. the thing. Yes. Here's why. Alvin Kamara. Um, that is a big reason why. And also, I, I do think Michael Thomas gets back. The fact that they didn't place him on the short-term IR, the fact that he didn't practice until now and he is back practicing, uh, I expect him to be there. And so the combination of those two guys with the fact that the Detroit Lions, I, I think, can keep up in this game, I, I don't expect them to win. I took the Saints to cover this spread, but uh, you know Stafford and Hawkinson and Galladay – they're going to be able to do enough to where uh, Drew Brees continues throwing the ball. Drew Brees or Joe Burrow vis versus Jacksonville? I'm going to take Joe Burrow. I, I really like Joe Burrow. Drew Brees week. or Ryan Fitzpatrick versus oh, Seattle? Get out of here. Get out of <laughs> here. I know. I knew the answer Ryan to that Fitzpatrick one. Ryan Fitzpatrick all day. Jared Cook, need to monitor if, if Drew Brees will have him as a weapon in this game. Assuming if Michael Thomas plays, you're not taking a shot on any other Saints wide receivers. That is correct. Are you done with Marvin Jones? Is this experiment over with his lack of production through the first three weeks and then Galladay being back? Yes, which means 50-yard touchdown incoming for Marvin Jones. Probably right. Seattle Seahawks at 3-0 and take on the 1-2 and Miami Dolphins. This game is a 52-and-a-half uh, over under. Seahawks are 6-and-a-half point road favorites. You can play both quarterbacks. Obviously, Russ is in your lineup. Ryan Fitzpatrick. I mean, the Seahawks have allowed three straight top seven quarterback finishes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're all like, you know, super excited for Russell Wilson that he's he looks like he's being unleashed. The term they're they're letting him cook, you know. Yeah, unlimited. And which he's Mister Unlimited, you know. And it's a shout out to the coaching staff, but we we have we're not thanking the right people here. Shout out to the Seattle defense. Mm -hmm. You guys are coming through in a way that fantasy players are. Look, chef's kiss mwah, to you guys when you, because you, you're the real heroes. You're the real MVPs here who are, in fact, letting Russell Wilson cook. So thank you. Y'all suck. Cup. <laughs> when you are mixing up the cauldron, the recipe for a, uh, a record-setting fantasy season, you must add one part bad defense. Yes. You must. It, huh. It's what drove the Mahomes 50-touchdown uh, season. Now, obviously, Russ is on his way to 75 touchdowns, so obviously. that's a little bit different. Um, by the way, do you know who the number three wide receiver is in total yardage in the NFL right now? Uh, DK Metcalf. DK yeah. Metcalf. Yeah, he has exceeded all expectations. 72 yards per reception right now. That's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what it feels like every single time that that ball goes to the moon. Eventually, it comes down in DK Metcalf's I mean, outstretched hands. Even the people who were out there. For, and look, I, I admit I was not fully touting DK Metcalf. I liked him where he was in the draft, but it you know came down to, well, I like Tyler Lockett a bit more. It, even the people who were fully Team DK Metcalf, I don't think you could have expected what has happened through these first three weeks. I think you're going to end this season with two wide receiver ones for yes. fantasy. I think yes, you're you going to have Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf both as a top 12 wide receiver this season. As of right now, Lockett is number two, Metcalf is number four at the position, which is pretty incredible. Um, Miami does not stand in the way of those two players. No, they don't. Nor Russell Wilson. Those are your three main starts from the Seattle offense. Beyond that, it gets way too murky right now at the running back position. Hyde, if Carson is out, yeah, or Peterson. 
Because I was going to ask the same question. Oh, you question. were? You were? Yeah. Oh, then let me answer. Yes. If Chris Carson is out, Carlos Hyde is a player that you should absolutely be starting. I'm worried about the injury, the shoulder injury, maybe muddying that water and then splitting time behind Carson. That would be my concern. Yeah, I mean, we'll continue to monitor practice reports. If anything gets downgraded or, you know, the, if there's a legit worry, sure. But if he's starting and Chris Carson isn't, I, I think you can trust him. All right, the Dolphin side of the ball. Brian Flores came out yesterday, said Miles Gaskin is everything we want in a Dolphin. Yeah, and he's he flippers. No, look, you can't ask for anything more than twenty seven touches his, his in a game. Sounds are incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean the the twenty seven touches that's Derrick Henryan. Can you do except a dolphin? Except you get points per no, I don't think so. I really don't <laughs> think I can do it. Um Mike, oh, okay. Can that's not bad. Kind of do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's I got to speed that up. It's everything you want in a dog. You got to be louder. That was really quiet. Well, I was really scared it was going to be bad. Uh, I know. <laughs> I'm trying to egg you on to get it bad. Go loud, Mike. Um, what was I saying? You were making a great point. About so, my, of, it was Derek Henry and of Miles Gaskin. Yeah, the touches are phenomenal. He is the, the, the centerpiece, and you're getting receiving work, which Derrick Henry doesn't get. So if you're in a full PPR league, even better. I still believe that the ceiling is extremely unlikable here for Miles Gaskin. They get around the goal line. He doesn't get the touchdowns. He is not good enough to score from 25 yards away. It's He, he gets tackled. Is he, he might used? catch 10 passes this Absolutely. week. Absolutely. He yeah. might catch 10 passes. He's got a high floor and a low ceiling. He's someone that I think you can start in a pinch. I'd it's start like him over Adrian space. Peterson. I'd start him over Frank Gore. He's a crawl I, space. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a crawl space. Sometimes they're necessary. All right, Devontae Parker, we're going to talk about him yeah. a little bit later. Oh, yeah. You can play him this week. Mike Gesicki, sure. Yep. Sure, absolutely. The Chargers at 1-2 and two take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 2-1. and one. The Buccaneers are seven and a half point favorites. It's a mere forty three and a half point over under, but with that, uh, with the Bucks being such heavy favorites, that gives them twenty five and a half implied points. Chargers just eighteen, which makes it a little bit tough. But you kind of know who you're starting in Los Angeles. That is the mercy. You have Austin Eckler and you got Keenan Allen. Yep. And the question mark and to you, me is Joshua Kelly. Whether or not you feel you can start him currently, I feel you cannot start him. Um, this is a game I think we're expecting them to be losing. Vegas is expecting them to be losing, in which case that's not a great Joshua Kelly game script. That's an Austin Eckler game script. So Hunt outside of those two. I mean, Hunter Henry is okay. Yeah, for tight end. I mean, if I have Hunter Henry, I'm happy. Hunter Henry or Mike Gesicki? Gesicki. Yeah, I'd go Gesicki for upside. Henry has not shown that he has that right now. Um. On the other side, we talked about Brady. I mean, Brady's sitting on the waiver wire of our league of record, and nobody really wants him. And he That's might be where he's going to stay. Uh, you know, Godwin not being out there, maybe no Scotty Miller. It doesn't seem special. And then Ronald Jones is a good start in this game. Yeah. Just based on volume and opportunity in the, the Vegas line. Mm -hmm. Mike Evans is obviously a great start. He's phenomenal, and he doesn't have Chris Godwin. Yeah. And he will probably catch more than one yard per touchdown uh, this game. And then I think Gronkowski. I think Gronk. I would play Gronkowski in this game over. Uh, would I play him over Hunter Henry? No, you wouldn't wow. play him over Hunter Henry. I might. I might. They are yeah, probably not. All right. Uh, anybody else from this game that Gronkowski you want to talk about? Or Noah Fant tonight? I'll Noah play Noah Fant. Okay. Yeah. No. no. Let's not get nuts. Baltimore, the Ravens at two and one take on the Washington football team. Man, it's going to be bad for Dwayne Haskins. Yes, this this might be it, fellas. <laughs> uh, Over under three interceptions. Oh no, let's make it two and a half. Oh gosh, I'm going to take the under. Oh. I expect the fumble. What, if, what if it's two and a half turnovers? Oh, then I'll take the over. All right, yeah. It, uh, Ron Rivera, head coach of Washington, has saying he will have the patience. But if you have, if you take last week's game, throw in the Baltimore Ravens defense against Dwayne Haskins. Coming off a loss. Yeah, this might be it. The Ravens are 13-point favorites. It's a 45.5 point over-under. That gives Washington 16 points to spread between Gibson yeah. and McLaurin and Thomas and 
I uh oh M- McLaurin is in because he's look they're gonna be losing Washington will be losing and Dwayne and uh, McLaurin is the entire passing offense. If I can sit Antonio Gibson, I'm trying to do that this week. He's my dude, but I'm not playing him with the Dwayne Haskins led offense against the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, the Ravens right now are top five against running backs, fantasy points given up. This is not a Gibson game. Uh, I agree. You're looking at Terry McLaurin and nobody else from the Washington football team. What about the other side? You have Lamar. Obviously, you're going to play him in this matchup. Mm -hmm. But Ingram, Dobbins, Gus Edwards, the running back position has been murky. We have Ingram just on the edges of RB2 in the rankings this week. But through three weeks, 62nd, 19th, 58th. The 19th was because he got into the end zone. I want Seven attempts last week. I want to say Mark Ingram. Sure. Uh, but <laughs> the problem here is the I way know that, where you're going. The way that this game is, ends up, Gus Edwards might be the running back who has the most fantasy points on this team when he comes up and he turns into the janitor and he is just cleaning up the entire second half. Yeah, if they're up 17 points at some point, you're, you're going It'll to be see the, the Gus, bus. Gus bus driving downhill. So maybe that means you don't start anybody. I, I would still start. You know, we've been talking about the – I think there's a, a new barometer called the Adrian Peterson barometer. Like, w- would <laughs> you fair. start over Adrian Peterson? And I, I would start Mark Ingram. I would too. Over Adrian Peterson. When you're favored – by this much on a run happy team. You, this is a great touchdown game for Mark Ingram. It's also a great touchdown game for Mark Andrews. The Washington defense is 27th against opposing fantasy tight ends. It's giving up 14.6 points per game. You're going to play Mark Andrews. Mm-hmm. The other question is actually Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown, it's like if you're going to play him, you would be playing him here. Yes, you will. Um, we or I do, will. We talked about him quite a bit yesterday, so – what happens if Hollywood Brown does not deliver in this game? Yeah, th- that's that's going to be really rough. If Hollywood Brown doesn't deliver, I think everybody's going to say you can't start him. He's His volatility is high, but when you talk about a 24% market share, this is hopefully a get-right game for Lamar Jackson. If Lamar Jackson looks good, Hollywood will look good. Um, and I'm speaking about the, the passing work, obviously, of Lamar Jackson. And, you know, the, the issue is, Again, similar to what we're talking about with Gus Edwards, if you know, you saw week one, the Ravens come out, trounced their opponent. Hollywood had 100 yards in the first half, was awesome, but then they didn't really need it anymore from that point on. And so you could have that happen. Um, you just hoping Marquise Brown connects on one of the deep touchdowns. This is a big game for Hollywood, I think, in terms of whether he ends up in fantasy lineups. In 17 starts in his career, three times inside the top 29. All right, uh, I think that wraps up this matchup, unless you guys have anything else you want to add. I do not. Starts of the week. All right. All right, we've got uh, starts of the week time. Mike, why don't you kick it off? Oh, well, thank you. You fine fella, you. Uh, At the quarterback position, I will be taking Matthew Stafford against the Saints. Look, he's at home. Currently, the Saints are the fifth best matchup against fantasy quarterbacks. Kenny Galladay is back. I am not overthinking it. Stafford at home with his full set of weapons. He is a fantasy start. Okay, Jason. Uh, look, I'm taking Ryan Fitzpatrick all yeah. day. I, yeah. you know, we we just alluded to how much I believe in Ryan Fitzpatrick. Go back to last year. The second half of last year, when Devontae Parker kind of broke out, he was phenomenal. In his last nine. Games played with the Dolphins as a starter. Seven of the nine, he's been a quarterback one. He should be a quarterback one this week. I mean, he's just been good, and Parker's healthy. And the matchup. (laughs) And the magic. And the magic. I mean, the Seattle defense is going to say, have some some magic. (laughs) They're so generous. They are giving. Yeah. Joe Burrow is my start of the week at the quarterback position against Jacksonville. Quite the start to his career thus far, running running for his life and yet completing 65% of his passes, facing the fifth easiest team against opposing quarterbacks. He is the quarterback 10 on the year right now, ahead of Lamar Jackson. Joe Burrow, my start of the week at the quarterback position. My running back start is Daryl Henderson from the Los Angeles Rams. He's taking on the New York Giants the past two weeks. He is averaging over six yards a carry. He's been a great player. We loved him coming into the into the league. High draft capital pick. He just needed his opportunity to go. And now with Cam Akers out, 
Uh, Daryl Henderson has displayed he is currently the best running back for the Los Angeles Rams. They are a run-first team right now, so I, I love them in this spot start here against the Giants. My start of the week at running back is Kenyon Drake. I mean, people right. are – People are disappointed. Here we go. He's averaging almost 20 touches a game, and he hasn't done enough with it. Uh, Andy, last week you expected better things for him from the Dolphins and or, or, or the Lions matchup. But the Carolina Panthers have been giving up touchdowns on the ground to running backs. I expect them to do it this week. If you get 20 opportunities against the Carolina Panthers, who have so far given up the second most, fourth most, and seventh most fantasy points to opposing running backs – this should be a Kenyon Drake week. I can't imagine benching him even in the midst of your disappointment. It feels like week four is kind of like a, a make it or break it week for certain players. I'm 100% on board with you on Kenyon Drake. I feel like I made all those arguments about Detroit last week, so I hope he comes through. I expect him to come through. I'm with you on it. David Montgomery is my running back start of the week. The opportunity is present. No Tariq Cohen. For the rest of the year, means there's going to be a lot more third down opportunities for David Montgomery, some of those two-minute drill situations. He's made some strides. This offensive line has made some strides. His yards per carry has jumped from 3.7 to 4.4 this season. I think he's just going to become a more reliable fantasy option mm -hmm. the rest of the way. So David Montgomery against Indianapolis. And I'm going uh, same lines here as Jason. Given that fan, given the butt pat here of one of the guys that I love during the offseason, DJ Moore from the Carolina Panthers. He is taking on Arizona. The matchup is great. The, the pace of play for this team is going to be excellent. The over-under is there, and he should be matched up a lot with Drake Kirkpatrick, who with pro football focus, he is currently ranked as a bottom five cornerback starter. He's not having a great season. Well, he missed all last week. It, look, he, he, he's also banged up. The air yards are there. DJ Moore accounts for 50% of the air yards for the Carolina Panthers. He's pulling in 24% of the targets. I expect the air yards to hit this week. And DJ Moore not only has a great game, but he has a big touchdown as well. I'm going with the stack. Devontae yeah. Parker going with Ryan Fitzpatrick. That's the key to Fitzpatrick. And, and they've got a, a mind meld that's been great the second half of last year. Devontae Parker was a top five fantasy wide receiver. Now he's been dealing with a hamstring injury that we should be enough weeks removed where I think Parker just lights it up. I have him uh, in several leagues. He will be in every single starting lineup. I'll find a way. Uh, I'm having a trouble uh, right now. I'm, You're I'm, having a I'm, trouble? I'm having a trouble, see? <laughs> having a trouble. Um, where I've, I've got a lineup, and I really, really, really want to get him in. I've got Odell Beckham, Tyler Lockett, oh, and Stephon Diggs. Oh my! In there, and I will be starting Devonte Parker probably over Odell Beckham. But the matchup, All I mean, right. oh, this is so tough. But I, I do think Devonte Parker will uh, have a you know ten plus targets in this game against Seattle and a touchdown. Diggs is currently number four in the NFL in terms of receiving yardage. Hopkins is number one. Will Fuller's my start of the week. Will Fuller, the Flying V. We're yep. back, baby. Yes, taking on Minnesota, the third easiest matchup against uh, fantasy wide receivers. Here's something you like to see. 94% of snaps for Will Fuller last week as a top target for Deshaun Watson. This team is due for the offensive explosion we've wanted to see from Deshaun Watson after starting 0-3. And guess what? You talk about generous secondaries. Minnesota's like, hey, Seattle, hold yeah. my beer. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. here to uh, provide some fantasy value to the opposing wide receiver. So Will Fuller's my start. Yeah, I am totally in on that. If you can go trade for Fuller or Cook's cheap, this is the time to do it because they're about to have a pretty solid run for fantasy. My my start of the week at the running or the tight end position, Dalton Schultz from the Dallas Cowboys. I am sticking with the process despite Logan Thomas uh, not coming through last week against the Cleveland Browns. The volume will be there. The opportunity will be there. Cleveland can be beat at the tight end position. So Dalton should see a fair amount of targets in this game. Yeah, and I'm going to start TJ Hawkinson opposite your Matthew Stafford start of the week. I've seen enough of the Saints to see how utterly bamboozled they are <laughs> by the tight end position. I mean, last They're having week, a trouble with it. They are having a massive <laughs> yeah. trouble with it. You, you, you saw two weeks ago the, the Raiders just kept throwing the ball over and over and over to Darren Waller, and, and they couldn't do anything. And then this past week against the Packers, the Packers just kept running the same play where they leak out the tight end, and Tanyan. they're like, 
Lewis, Sternberger. <laughs> Everybody had a great game. So I think Hawkinson is set up for success here against a Saints defense that is massively struggling with tight ends. All right, let me say this first. TJ Hawkinson, Dalton Schultz, better starts of the week than my start of the week here. But I like it. I'm I, pivoting. I like it. Oh, you're not. Oh, boo. I'm going to go with Rob Gronkowski this week. Oh, no. Rob Gronkowski. Mike, you've, you've highlighted. Chris Harris is missing this game. Yeah. The inside of the field. An area that Tom Brady is very comfortable with. Probably no Scotty Miller. Justin Watson's not reliable. Mike Evans is an outside guy. You're going to stand for that, Jason? Rob Gronkowski's going to be my start of the week this week. Stay water in fantasy. He's not the same player. It didn't matter last week with six catches on seven targets. He looked uh, like he was getting further integrated into the offense. He looked like he was running in mud. <laughs> six for 48. He gets in the end zone this week. I'm going to make him my start of the week. That's I think that's fine. That's I love uh, that's, it. That's, that's I fine. love a bold I, call. I, I I hope it comes through. And honest, honestly, like all jokes aside, I could. There's a clear and utter path for it to come true. It makes sense. It's founded in logic. I just think you're going to be upset if OJ Howard comes down with a touchdown. I agree with you. All right, those were our starts of the week. You can check out all of the rankings, the start sit tool at thefantasyfootballers.com. Now the most important segment of the show. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. If you're feeling blue and in need of some fantasy solace, put on your big boy pants and go with the Cardinals' Zane Gonzalez. It wasn't nearly cringy enough for my taste. Uh, I agree. It was outstanding. <laughs> I don't. Um, I, what I'm confused about is when did when did Bill show up? Oh, Bill Shakespeare over here. <laughs> well done. I'm yeah, impressed. I take between all the that credit. and that kit kitty catty joke you made oh, earlier. I'm on fire. And then the having a trouble. I mean, this is just a a plus award, show. A wordsmith. <laughs> this is why we won those awards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right here, right now. They're actually here to take them back. We want to thank Pristine Auction, a signed Devonte Parker football cleat. This is one of the cool things. You can get some neat. Uh, what they have pylons sometimes cleats over there $47 for a signed cleat I'm just wow. glad it was a football cleat and not like a soccer cleat that would have been embarrassing yeah yeah having him sign the wrong shoes yeah yeah they don't do that over there at pristine auction that's right use the code ballers get a $10 credit we did it guys we made it we got more matchups on the show tomorrow and um, yeah we're done it's over no more trouble from these guys for the day. Hey, stay safe, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, look, this has been a crazy year. And more than ever, if you're looking at education, if you're looking at an online education, you need flexibility, you need affordability. That's what WGU brings you. They have a low flat rate tuition. It covers as many courses as you can complete each term so you can learn as fast as you want and you can save a ton of money. Get your $65 application fee waived at wgu.edu slash fantasyfootballers.